Hey, 42 here. There's an enduring mystery surrounding black holes, specifically supermassive black holes. No matter how much the world's greatest thinkers have mused upon supermassive black holes, we still have no idea how they were created. Supermassive black holes are literally the center of everything. Almost every galaxy we've observed has a supermassive black hole at its center. Their unfathomable gravitational pull literally holds galaxies together. Your average black hole is about 10 to 20 times the mass of our sun. A supermassive black hole, however, is anywhere from millions to billions of times the mass of our sun. Yet they are only about 17 times the diameter of our sun. That's denser than Amber Heard's dog. Yet, despite their central role to all known celestial systems and life as we know it, astrophysicists still can't work out how they came to exist in the first place. You see, supermassive black holes are the most massive singular objects in the entire universe. And to create something of such immense mass requires a tremendous force. And we don't know of such a force. When the universe was still a baby, over 10 billion years ago, enormous clouds of primordial gas, mostly hydrogen and helium, were commonplace. When these collapsed, they usually formed stars. But if the collapse happened quickly enough, they could have bypassed star creation altogether and formed a supermassive black hole instead. The problem is, as a gas cloud collapses, it rapidly cools, which causes it to fragment and form stars instead of black holes. And it's thought it might not have even been possible for it to collapse quickly enough to skip the whole cooling process. A more exotic idea is that of primordial black holes, these would have formed directly from density fluctuations in the hot, early universe just fractions of a second after the Big Bang. These later coalesced to form supermassive black holes. But finding evidence for primordial black holes has proven incredibly challenging, so this is still speculative rather than solid science. But what if the answer lies not in black holes or gas clouds, but another entity entirely? What if the answer lies in stars? For every photon of visible matter that you can see, there is estimated to be six times as much dark matter. Visible matter, otherwise known as baryonic matter, makes up 5% of the universe, but it's estimated that dark matter comprises 27%. Oh, in case you're wondering, the other 68% is dark energy. But the craziest part about dark matter is that we have no idea what it is. We do know one thing, it exists that we are 99% sure of. We've ran enough experiments and have enough evidence by now to know of its existence, and we can even detect where it is, but we still don't know what it is. Ado is an all-in-one management software that provides entrepreneurs with a range of applications to simplify their day-to-day -day management of their business. Personally, I use a bunch of different business applications that are all really pricey, so having them all under one roof with Ado is a game changer for me. The first Ado application is free for life, including hosting and support. Once you have two or more standalone applications, you can then switch to a paid plan. I particularly like the Ado Project application, which offers a comprehensive and flexible project management solution that allows anyone or any business to track project progress, deadlines, budgets, resources, and collaborate with your team in real time. With Ado's Project Manager, you get a clear and customizable dashboard, making it easy to manage your tasks, track deadlines, and view your team's progress, as well as schedule calls and meetings, and synchronize them with your calendar all in one place. There are different views, such as Gantt for timelines, but I really enjoy using the Kanban view, allowing me to organize my tasks into their individual stages, which keeps my production pipeline for this channel flowing seamlessly. You can even record the time spent on each task using the Timesheets application and invoice hours worked directly to the client. Ado has been a game changer for my various business application needs, from website building to project planning and much more. So click the link in the description to try out Ado for yourself. And a big thanks to Ado for sponsoring this video. It's even possible that dark matter could be a bit of a wimp. No, I'm not throwing shade at dark matter. I'm trying to say it's a 
weakly interacting massive particle, a hypothetical type of particle that has been proposed as a candidate for dark matter. You see, wimps don't interact with regular matter, but they do interact with each other, hence the name. When two wimps meet, they destroy each other, producing a massive burst of gamma ray energy. All known stars, like our own, sustain themselves with nuclear fusion. In the core of stars, hydrogen atoms collide at high speed, producing helium and releasing energy, energy which lights and warms our planet. But what if that same process could be mirrored in a kind of unseen shadow world inside a so-called dark star? What if, instead of a big ball of colliding hydrogen atoms, there was a big ball of colliding dark energy? or WIMPs that destroy each other on contact and produce energy. I started this video by saying that astrophysics has an enduring mystery. How did supermassive black holes come to exist? What if the answer has always proved so elusive because the solution has been sequestered in the shadows? What if supermassive black holes were created not by the collapse of some kind of visible matter, but by the annihilation of dark matter. What if supermassive black holes were created by dark stars? Picture an early universe filled with these colossal, invisible stars, burning with the destruction of dark matter particles. As they grew more massive, their cores could have collapsed under their own gravity, forming black holes of immense mass. This idea, while still speculative, could be the key to unlocking one of the greatest mysteries of the cosmos. But then why can't regular stars produce supermassive black holes? Well, regular stars are powered by nuclear fusion, as we've said, a process that can only happen when mass is compressed extremely tightly by gravity. So the size of regular stars is always limited by the fact that the gravity of its core is contracting the star's diameter to within certain limits. Dark stars, however, don't need to contract so tightly to ignite a chain reaction. A dark star can stabilize at much larger sizes and still burn away because they don't rely on fusion, but the mutual annihilation of WIMPs. Before collapsing to form supermassive black holes, these early universe dark stars could have been as wide as our entire solar system. For the time being, dark stars remain theoretical. They are simply an interesting thought experiment mm. that, if true, would explain a long and frustrating mystery surrounding a type of black hole that very much does exist. But that might all be about to change, because despite all of the skepticism and controversy surrounding dark stars in the scientific community, and there is plenty, we think we have actually seen one. Not just one, in fact but a few. In 2021, NASA launched the largest telescope currently in space, the James Webb Space Telescope. From a tropical rainforest to the edge of time itself. It was designed as the next step forward from the Hubble Space Telescope. With brand new super high sensitivity instruments, JWST is able to do something unique. It can observe the longer wavelength of the infrared spectrum, which happens to contain photons from the very beginning of the universe. Essentially, JWST allows us to peer back in time, all the way back to the first fledgling days following the birth of our universe. Well, I say days, it actually observed galaxies from the first few hundred million years after the Big Bang, but that's still a hell of a lot older than anything observed by previous telescopes. And when JWST peered way back in time, it spotted something strange. Really, really bright galaxies. And that's odd, because astrophysicists had long thought that galaxies that bright couldn't have possibly existed until at least one billion years after the birth of the universe. Yet, here they are, caught on camera, well, infrared telescope, existing hundreds of millions of years before they were supposed to. One of these surprise galaxies was dated at a sprightly 302 million years after the Big Bang. According to existing models of the universe, that simply shouldn't be possible. Catherine Fries is a theoretical astrophysicist at the University of Texas, 
and she, along with her colleagues, were the first to propose the concept of dark stars. When Fries looked at these images, specifically these three so-called galaxies captured by JWST, she suggested that they are not in fact galaxies, uh -huh. but dark stars, the first ever knowingly captured by a telescope. These objects are estimated to be about a million times the mass of our sun. And I'm sure you'll agree, they all appear to be round in shape and miss the fine wispy features typically associated with galaxies. But the science community is still heavily divided on this conclusion. It could just be that we are looking at three unusually round galaxies. All right, so I think it's about time we addressed the dark elephant in the cosmos. How the bloody hell can we see a dark star, let alone capture an image of one? Surely they're invisible to the naked eye and even to an advanced gold-plated telescope. Did I mention JWST is gold-plated? Pretty sexy, right? We can't see dark matter, and it would stand to reason that we couldn't see dark stars either no matter how gargantuan they happen to be. But here's the thing, the kind of unexpected thing. Dark stars, if they exist or ever did exist, were bright. Shockingly, blindingly, blisteringly bright. Dark matter annihilations still create light, just like a regular old fusion star. Or to be more precise, dark matter interactions convert the mass of their particles into energy, which in turn heats the surrounding visible gases, which emit light. In fact, when WIMPs collide, they would create significantly more light than a fusion reaction. It's believed that in the early universe, a single dark star would have outshone an entire galaxy. And that's how those 13.4 billion year old photons from those early dark stars reached the sexy gold-plated lens of the JWST just a couple of years ago. But in order for dark stars to be born, there would need to be an extremely high density of dark matter in a particular region of space. That's why we've been talking about dark stars in the past tense this entire video. The universe has become more homogenous over time, so dark stars were likely born during the first few million years of the universe when concentrated clumps of dark matter were found all over the place. Such conditions may not exist in this much more mature version of the universe we now find ourselves in. But some scientists believe there are places in the universe where brand new dark stars could still be birthed today, near the very center of galaxies. In fact, there is a spot in our own galaxy, the Milky Way, that might be a breeding ground for dark stars. It's called the S-star cluster, a collection of stars in very close orbit to the supermassive black hole at our galaxy center. We've known about the existence of this cluster since 1996, but just this year, astrophysicists noticed something odd. The S-star cluster is made up of unusually young stars. Most of them are only a few million years old, and there is also a surprising lack of old stars in this region. When you get this close to a supermassive black hole, there will be a higher density of dark matter. And it could be that the overwhelming amount of dark matter in this region is constantly spawning new, young, dark stars, burning away and producing light using nothing more than the annihilation of dark matter particles as fuel. The idea that dark stars could be the engines behind the creation of supermassive black holes challenges everything we thought we knew. It suggests that the universe is more dynamic, more mysterious, and more interconnected than we ever imagined. And although the concept of dark stars is still unproven, it's an interesting thought experiment that opens the doors to other shadowy objects that might make up major parts of our universe without us even knowing of their existence. Thanks for watching. Just a quick word to say that I couldn't make these videos without the support of my Patreon members. Consider joining the exclusive 42 Discord community by supporting me on Patreon. It's a great place to discuss my videos with like-minded individuals and myself. The link's in the description, but if you don't want to, or you can't join my Patreon, then please don't worry. A simple like or comment to say thanks would also put a huge smile on my face. Thank you.